Are you faster in a race or solo by yourself? Can you push yourself just as hard when you're on your own, out there alone, as you can in a race day situation where you've got competition? Do you need that competition to get the very best out of yourself? I was able to test this on one of the world's hardest courses to find the answer. And I'm gonna show you the initial record I set and the course. So I already had the KOM. Then I'm gonna show you video footage from the training that I did in order to try to run even faster solo. So you can see what the training is and what it looks like up close and personal. But what do you think? Are you able to push yourself just as hard on your own or do you need a race day situation to provide the competition you need to be able to push yourself to the limit? So just a bit of background because I think this needs explaining. This is 2017 and this is Doi Intanon Ultra Marathon and Intanon is the highest mountain in Thailand. And for the last five, six, seven years, I've been basing myself in Granada most of the year in the south of Spain. And the reason for that is because I'd done Sabida Al Pico Valletta in 2010, which I think is the most beautiful race on the planet. And then I'd relocated there a couple of years later to train on the course, completely sort of fallen in love with Granada too. And then all of a sudden I get to Chiang Mai, which I'd been doing regularly, the winters in Chiang Mai, and they've organized this race 50 kilometers uphill, which almost is a carbon copy of Subido or Pico Valletta. So what are we preparing for here? The Valletta race, side by side with Internum race, I know how hard the Valletta race is. The Internum race looks easier there. It finishes at lower altitude slightly and doesn't go up as much. But when you look under the bonnet, it's the elevation gain at Intanon which makes it more difficult, along with the biggest factor, which is maximum gradient of 36.7% versus only 13.8% at Valletta. So literally from programming the watch, seven times 10 minutes with 60 seconds rest in between. then we're off. So we started the zoo in Chiang Mai and the target is to get to the top of Doi Pui. So nearly 16 kilometers up the road and this is the first rep. So in this first rep it's about controlling it and getting into that heart rate as quick as you can during during the rep but whilst being in control and whilst pacing it knowing that you can do seven of them. Checking the heart rate monitor is on properly, recording the data. And then you're focusing on form. And you're making sure that, you know, are you propelling yourself forward properly? The lads on the bikes here, we've got obviously somebody videoing Bali, which is great. And then we've got Kevin, who's a runner. Um, always really, really helpful. And um, yeah, it's just brilliant um, to have that kind of support in Thailand. So this is still the first rep because very, very quickly I'll have to take my shirt off because it's, it's so hot there. I think because it was my birthday on uh, last week. I think because I'm older, it's harder. <laughs> it might be, yeah. yeah. And then, as you see, there's no messing around inside that rest. It's about drinking, preparing yourself for the next rep, bringing the heart rate down, getting the breathing under control. And by having that support on the bike, on the motorbike, 
it's it's worth its weight in gold because you just can't do these sessions otherwise without taking a camel back or a, a water bottle and um and then you you know your gait's changing the way that you're running changing everything's different and so this frees you up and allows you to be in a race like condition now it's just so beautiful looking back i love i love running up this mountain i love doi satep i love doi pui uh, we race down there on the bikes. Uh, that's the Song Tower you've just seen, which is a red taxi, like a taxi bus. Just checking the heart rate. All only will have a heart rate on. Not bothered about the pace because I know that the pace will come if I'm able to sustain the right effort. So if that heart rate was flying up to 185, 190, and it was not sustainable, it wouldn't feel sustainable either. You wouldn't need to look at your watch, but... I'd have to bring that back and then go slower. And as the season goes on, hopefully, for the same level of effort, you're able to go further, which is exactly what I'd done over the previous three, four years. Okay, okay. camera ready, three, two, one. That was tough. The first two, I didn't control. And then the last one, I had to really push it in order to get to the palace. But that's seven times, 10 minutes with one minute in between. And we get 15k up the mountain at sort of average of 7% gradient. So I'm really happy. One more time. Sorry. I think it's okay. Sure. Okay. So this is what we're trying to beat. So this is Doi Interdan Ultra. 2017, 3 hours 55 for the victory and for the KOM. And as you can see there, we've not got the heart rate data, but the average pace is 352. So I know I need to hold that and go faster. And what I'm aiming at is 10 minutes quicker, so 3.45. And later on in 2017, I did a very similar race, Sabido Pico Valletta, in 3.45, and that was tough. I really, really made that happen because I'd failed the year before, and I just had the bit between my teeth. So 174 beats, average heart rate. And then my training changed. So three years later and this is during COVID, the race had changed slightly, so you had to take water cups and sort of slowed the race down, but I trained to lactate, all effort-based training. And so instead of that historic relative effort, 7-2-1, I'd done four minutes slower, but 3-2-3, three, three, less than half, and an average heart rate of 161, so 13 beats per minute less for pretty much the same effort and won the race. And the only hard work that I had to do in this race was the last 10 to 15 minutes. So I want to apply the same thinking to the Internom race. And to do that, we want seven times 10 minutes, which you've just seen in zone four. So it's going to be tough, which you can see there from the effort level. Temperature is tough, 30 degrees, but that's great for us. It's exactly what we want. And the mountain is same gradient, same humidity, same heat. It's just 50 kilometers down the road to the course, and it's really accessible. And these are the sort of average paces. And for the heart rate, it's exactly what we're looking for for the session. So I'm really happy with it. Elevation there versus pace, seven times 10 minutes, and the heart rate is bang on. So judging these first couple, is always sort of, oh, I always overcook it and then pull it back. And then the two bumps you see here and here are literally for, to get to the temple at Doisetep and then to get to the palace, the King's Palace, which are, are steep ramps in order to get up. So I've sort of managed to do that under 50 minutes and then under 70 minutes to be able to get there. But when I look at stride length, cadence, all the other stats, more than happy. And then that puts you in a really good place to do the attempt solo and see if we can hit that 345. So tune in for the next video to see if we can hit that 345.